I love cut content. Not because it was cut, no, but because it's different. Sometimes it gives you a unique peek into the minds of writers or developers. Sometimes it gives you whole new experiences, like lost songs or cut levels. Occasionally it gives you a new way to get your ass whooped, like Flood Juggernauts and Halo 2. I love hearing about the alternate ideas, alternate stories and takes, and alternate character stories that were planned. Most of all, I like experiencing the cut content myself, from hunting down bands obscure demo songs to playing beta versions of games. It's digital archaeology. As you unearth the old, you discover new layers, new experiences. Sometimes you unearth things that change history. Think back a ways to when Simon Y first released the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 beta that now bears his name. Think back to people discovering Hidden Palace Zone, Wood Zone, and all the other cut things. And imagine how that must have felt. Think of how it feels for some when a Lost Doctor Who episode is discovered. Think about how it would feel if you discovered your favorite band didn't release an album, and you discovered it. It would be transcendental. Now, think about how it feels for those of us who hunt those things, those of us that try to unearth them. Sometimes you'll even have videos of lands few men have tread, lands that people pour days, weeks, and even months of their lives into. Lands that withered and died, placed in the recycle bin or on old hard drives or discs. These lands are always the mother load for those like us. In particular, I speak of Installation 04, a Halo Ring, an alien built ring world imagined and coded by Bungie Studios, a world that went through many revisions once upon a time. It was a crumbling relic, chunks already coming off of it. In that world, the Master Chief could ride blind wolves and fight dinosaurs. Elites had handheld shields, and Prophet was a rank held by few elites, not a species. An alternate universe full of promise, and one that was aborted. In another world, Cortana's rampancy set in far sooner, due to the flood of knowledge she stole from the archives of the installation. Mad with power, this universe's Cortana was to try to dominate the universe with Halo. This Cortana, a dark mirror of the main series Cortana, was also never to be. In a universe aborted near the end, Captain Key's proto-gravemind form would have been burnt with the cut flamethrower and his skull taken from it. But Bungie was so disturbed by the skull model they had made, a charred one based on real pictures of charred skulls, it too was removed. But there was something far grand in discovering that which is known to be. That something is discovering something which was never known, something that even the company never discusses. That is the something I discovered. It all started with the federal act of gravity, the menace of all things. In this case, the unrelenting, unfeeling force murdered an innocent Xbox. Well, I say innocent, but I'm likely to die of high blood pressure one day due to that thing, so maybe not so innocent. All that matters is that I, a clumsy idiot, dropped my Xbox, a device infamous for working quite well as a cinder block, and something went wrong inside. It no longer could read discs. I swore, yelled at some things, tortured enemies in some games, and calmed down, before coming to a decision. Xboxes, one day, will be rare. So, I decided I'd pony up the cash to get a new one, one that actually worked. I thought about where I could get an Xbox. Obviously, GameStop won't carry them, so the solution was out. All of my friends had GameCubes and PlayStation 2s, and I doubt any of them would have sold me an Xbox if they had one, and the town's annual garage sale weekend wasn't for several more months. So I was left with one option, the internet. I pondered the options and decided that Amazon was the safest bet, while eBay was the one more likely to save me money. As I was being foolish and even spending this cash, I decided to go the eBay route. That said, I wasn't going to buy from shady old guy 6969 or anything like that. Only highly rated reputable sellers. I'm impulsive, not dumb. Searching around, I found an Xbox cheap with a buy it now price that was within my budget and, in addition, the seller had hundreds of great reviews. The description indicated that the seller was a former employee of Bungie, and they had this Xbox they had taken home a while back, after being given permission, and it worked like it was made yesterday. 
I quickly bought it up and waited, if, waited for it to show up, which it did as fast as packages usually do. When it got to my home, I gleefully slashed through the obscene amounts of packing tape and lifted the Xbox out of the packing peanuts. I would have lifted it over my head, Link style, but I figured if I dropped it, I'd crack my scroll open. So after finding the wires and setting it up, I plugged in a controller and decided to look at the hard drive. I hoped in vain to find the Halo 2 E3 game in there, but was let down. There were plenty of saved games, from Half-Life 2 to Tony Hawk, but something caught my eye. On the saves for Halo was another Halo thing. It just said Halo Beta. I did what any fanboy would do. I squeed and then checked it out. It had an option I hadn't seen before. Play. I hit that button so hard it could have filed charges. The game started up identical and everything looked normal. All the missions were there, all the multiplayer maps, all the everything. Everything was unlocked and all the descriptions and name were the same. I did what seemed the most logical. Started on Pillum of Autumn, set the game to heroic and sat down for a night of evolved combat. Of course, I did all the fun stuff like blasting Captain Keys. That was the first time I discovered a difference. In the normal game, Cortana shouts that you've gone rampant, leftover writing from a time where the Master Chief was just an augmented human. Invisible Marines come in and riddle you with bullets. You die and go back to the last checkpoint. I often made a game out of it. Shoot keys, start stopwatch, end it when I finally die. I had gotten quite good at it, painting the autumn bridge red and taking quite a long while to die. So imagine my surprise when I opened fire and the marines started dying. I felt bad killing Sergeant Johnson because he's awesome, but was still rather shocked that they were dead. I continued to the level wondering what was going to happen next. All the marines I encountered were hostile, which was unsurprising, and I had to find my way through enemies both human and covenant. I thought back to Marathon and the B.O.B.s. This was typical Bungie, letting you slaughter your allies for fun and to make the game harder for yourself. Cortana did her usual dialogue and we fought our way onto the Bumblebee escape pod. However, this is where the next change happened. In the original game, a marine falls in front of the chief, and the chief makes sure as he doesn't get left behind, making them the last two on. In this, however, John ignored the marine and tossed a grenade into the pod. He then climbed in, and the seats were now filled with dead marines. Like when the pod crashes, John pushed the body of the pilot out of her chair and climbed in the seat, flying it down. Text came up, subtitles ready, with it indicating Cortana was saying, I don't know what the hell has gone wrong with you, but seeing as we're stuck together, we might as well work together. There was no voice which made sense, if Jen had never recorded the line. The chief replied to her, sounds good to me. Despite John's piloting, the bumblebee still crashed but there was no dialogue of the pilot screaming as it went down. This wasn't surprising seeing as she was dead. After the level Halo started, Cortana said that with Keys dead, the Autumn was completely destroyed on impact. That was the first oh shit moment for me, as for those who haven't played the game, you have to blow the Autumn up to destroy the ring. Without the Autumn, that was going to be hard to say the least. However, after that, the level played normally with the difference being that the marines were still hostile. Despite that, Fallhammer was not, and you were still supposed to go rescue the various trapped marines. I managed to dodge them and kill the Covenant, and they boarded Fallhammer's Pelican dropship as always. However, my warthog was gunnerless because I had to kill him before he killed me. I finished the level and Truth and Recon Reconciliation, the next level, began. I expected to have to kill all my marines, but instead Johnson, back from the dead, as he often does in the first Halo, said to John, Look, you killed Keys, hell, you even killed me, but we're st both stuck here, together, so why don't we work together and take this goddamn ship, we can try to kill each other later, understand? This was subtitle and did make it a good explanation for why they'd be boarding the ship if Captain Keys wasn't on it. At this point I was pretty impressed. Rather than having killing keys be a roadblock, they apparently were intending it as an alternate evil path. With what seemed to be building to a bleaker ending, the level continued as usual after getting some marines from the cell block. 
Without keys, Cortana declared to the group that the Covenant forces were far too large to overtake, and that they'd have to get off the ship. Subtitles only, of course. However, the chapter was still called, Shut Up and Get Behind Me, Sir. A simple oversight from being beta, apparently. After that, the story progressed pretty much as normal, with minor changes for the lack of keys and the autumn, until we return to the truth and reconciliation in the level, Keys. Now in the normal game, the Flood, basically the Zerg combined with Headcrabs, have been released and taken Keys, as I said before. He's being turned into a new grave mine, the Flood Hive Mind. However, without Captain Keys, things were different. In Keys, you're seeking to find him to, his, to use his neural implants to detonate the Pillar of Autumn and destroy Halo. As you have learned that is it is a part of an array that, once fired, will destroy all biomatter in the galaxy. In this keyless version of Keys, you're seeking to take the Truth and Reconciliation, or what's left of it, and detonate it instead. Cortana's humorous teleportation mistake was still there, and it was surreal to see them bonding despite this John's broken moral compass. So I slogged through the level, one of my least favorites after the library, and reached the bridge. However, there was no proto grave mine. I was surprised that the Flood hadn't started building one, but then it dawned on me that there was no proper base for it in this universe. With so few marines on Halo due to the total destruction of the Autumn, along with the fact that Thel Vatamine would obviously still survive, the Flood didn't have a brilliant mind to start with. The cutscene, far different from the usual, began, and John inserted Cortana's chip into the holo panel. Cortana infiltrated the network, hacking into its systems only to discover that, due to the damage, it couldn't self-destruct. The Flood began to swarm into the room, and John quickly grabbed Cortana's chip, put it back in his head, and tried to fight, but failed. They swarmed him and quickly tore apart large portions of the chest part of his armor. Without it, a Flood infection form leaped onto him and quickly burrowed into him, much like how the Flood infection happens in Halo 3. It took me a moment to realize what had just happened. John was now taken by the Flood and with him, Cortana, and with her, Halo's Index. Without the Index, Halo can't even fire. I wonder what was going to happen next, as the game had now gone far off the rails. The screen went black before going to the loading screen. What started next surprised me. A large grave mine now resided in Halo's control room, in possession of 343 Guilty Spark, monitor of installation 04. Cortana's giant form was at the control room's panel once more. Rather than her usual color changing while there, she was red, like rampant Cortana in Halo 4. The grave mind speaking in iambic septimeter as always, but only in subtitles, told Cortana to activate the slip space, Halo equivalent of warp, drives and set course for Earth. The grave mind then lowered a tentacle down and placed a combat form on the ground. This combat form, however, wasn't a normal one. Instead, it was a headless one, with Mjolnir V armor that the Master Chief wore, repaired and on the body. Then it dawned on me that it was John's body, and the head was just kept in the Gravemind. Gravemind placed the helmet on it, and the helmet attached to the suit as it usually would. A loading screen came up, and I waited, eager to find out what would happen next. When it finished loading, Installation 04 came out of slip space in orbit around Earth. The orbital mat cannons fired at it, but to no avail. And hordes of reprogrammed sentinels swarmed the cannons, destroying them with ease. Then, flood drop pods launched from the commandeered halo down to Africa at what I assumed was going to be the new Mombasa, and turned out to be right. The game went into first person from the view of Flood John, and the pod landed with him in it in the city which seemed to be a very early version of the E3 demo version. From there, the only objective was to destroy the human population, which was quite easy, as few even fought back. After the first few city blocks, however, the marines began to arrive in full force. Sadly for them, I had an army of flood allies. They too were overrun, and surprisingly, infected. I wonder why Bungie didn't use that until Halo 3, but figured they just didn't like how it looked as it did look rather bad. I continued on, enjoying the darker outcome, and finished the level. The cutscene began, and the flood plods were shown launching down to Earth, blanketing it. It then cut to the grave mine in Cortana, 
as Grave Mind gloated, giving his usual lines about how the Flood were the good guys and the next day for all species, Cortana flickered blue several times before staying that way. She pulled out the index and teleported Sar Sergeant Johnson onto the bridge, who, according to Cannon, is immune to the Flood. She gave Johnson the index as only a human can activate a halo and told him to activate it quick before, as she said, John, no, that thing, noticed. As it was once more subtitles, I assume she whispered it. Johnson activated the halo and began firing, with the grave mine finally catching on, far too late. It showed all seven halos activating it, and then, shockingly, a shot of the arc, although not nearly as pretty as it is in Halo 3. They fired, and it showed all the various species that were in the first halo being disintegrated in various locations, even places like High Charity and San Helios. As this finished, it cut to Cortana, flickering red, blue, and purple, her default color in the first halo. Sitting down, looking around at the desolate installation, for the first time in a while, she spoke with actual dialogue. Somberly, she said, I have defied gods and demons. I am your shield. I am your sword. It asked, and I answered. For a moment of safety, I loosed damnations on the stars. This is the way the world ends. I am a monument to all your sins. The credits rolled, playing what sounded like an early version of the Halo 2 track, Never Forget. Cortana flickering in the background. My mind was blown. Interpretations raced through my head, and I quickly went to the mission select to do it on Legendary, as the games always, almost always have a slightly different end on Legendary. To my anger, the alternate final mission was absent. Dedicated and obsessive, I started up Pillar of Autumn on Legendary and killed Keys, fighting through the entire game. As the credits ended once more, I realized it was, and had been slowly, slowly zooming in on Cortana. After her face filled the screen, she whispered, I see you, and giggled. Startled, I let out a shriek, and then I laughed. One good prank by Bungie for the most dedicated players. In one legendary ending, an elite gropes Johnson, and in the other, Cartana scared the shit out of you. I was impressed, but saddened that the alternate story was cut. But you could never make a sequel out of that, so chances are, Microsoft told them to remove it. I messaged the seller on eBay and told him about his forgotten save data, and he messaged me back asking if I had discovered the secret yet. After telling him yes, he sent back a smiley and said, just so I don't get sued, for your eyes only, okay? And I agreed. I still revisit that alternate halo sometimes. Impact Black Mac 10, Junior and his friend Not a pot to piss and starving brothers on a mission Half past two, bring your plan to rob the tow booth GW Bridge, got the weapon concealed, nothing to lose They choose to break the rules at all costs Stick them in Jersey, hit the other side to New York Black and red leather suits and black biker boots One got the gun, the other one controls the motorbike Adrenaline pumping, dreams of cash Anybody try to stop them getting lead in their face Believe that, Black Pack